Hello. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Um, mad times, isn't it? It's crazy. It's a year since I last interviewed you and did that uh, documentary called Box Like a Girl. It's been a year? Yeah, it's been a year. So wow. I just wanted to sort of do this little bit, sort of catch up with both you and Simran to just see how you're going because a lot has changed since then. Yeah. So how are you doing yeah. in lockdown? It's all right. At the start, I found it a bit hard because I was getting ready for the national. So I was so in like a routine and like I was getting ready to fight. So like to go from that to straight away, that's it now, chill, not training, go back home. And it was weird, but I'm getting, it's all right now. Like I've got a routine going at home. So just trying to get on with it. And I'm still in contact with GB and that. So I'm just doing what I have to do. What's your routine then? Talk to me a, bit, a little bit about that. So I get up in the morning and I'll go for a run and I'll come home, eat, shower. And then for the rest of the day, I'll just try to do something to keep busy. So like my dad at the minute is building like a greenhouse. So like the whole family is just like getting involved with that. <laughs> and then at night I'll do like a session because obviously I've still got my brother and my dad's my coach. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I can still train. So I'm training with them at the minute, like night. Just And then some two, two times a week we have GB Zoom calls so like they can still train us. And we can still get like contact with them. So I'm still training twice a day, but just it's more chilled now because there's nothing coming up. Mm. And for the rest of the day, I'm just trying to keep busy. Have you been doing Scum Thought Boxing Zoom sessions with all the other boxers that are at the club? Yeah, so um, we actually started really late with that. Like everyone was just getting along with their own training and always putting like in a group chat what we was doing. But now some of the younger kids, they're trying, like they're finding it hard to keep motivated because they're only young. Mm. So now, now we're doing Zoom sessions a couple of times a week and everyone takes it in turns, like, who's going to coach? So I've been coaching a few, my brother and like, other coaches and that, just trying to mix it up as much as we can. How are you staying motivated? Because it, it must be hard for you as well. Yeah, I think it is hard. But for me, I just always look at the bigger picture. Like, at the end of this, there's going to be fights again. Like, hopefully, there'll be the Nationals at the end of the year. Mm. Or I just want to keep... Mainly keep my weight down as well. <laughs> yeah, how, how are you getting on with the diet? The, the diet is out the window of it. <laughs> diet's, my weight's not the greatest, but I'm just, I shouldn't be on weight yet. That's what I'm telling myself. I'm not fighting, so I shouldn't be on weight. So if I want a treat, I'm going to have, I'm going to treat myself. Maybe I treat myself a bit too much. <laughs> if boxing was to resume tomorrow, then how long would you need to prep? to be able to fight then competitively? Um, I think, for me, I think my fitness is all right. I think mm. I could fight in the next couple of weeks on my fitness. But I think it'll take a few weeks just to get, because obviously we've gone from sparring every single week mm. to none at all. So I think accuracy, like my accuracy of my shots and stuff like that, I think I'd need a few weeks to get back because I think the first sparring session back, my accuracy is going to be terrible and just stuff like that, like ring rust. <laughs> I think I need a few weeks for that. Like I said, it's a year on from the documentary I did with you. Have you done any other media work? Um, I've done like a few interviews here and there. Like another girl got in contact a few weeks ago from a university, and she wants she's got Stacy on board doing some interviews for her because it's about women's boxing. So she did an interview over the phone with me as well so i've had that and then i had that other one on instagram the other week that shadow box so i've done a, a few but i still not shadow box? it was do you know what i was so nervous for it yeah because it was it's my first interview that because it was live on instagram so i mm. couldn't you know i'm like if i mess up i'm like oh can we, can we start again <laughs> where that was like you haven't got any of that you just gotta go with it and i didn't know the questions beforehand mm. so i was really nervous but i felt i felt like i did good yeah, you did do well. The thing is with you, you've got so much to say. And I, I'm at fault as well for this. I sort of get my, my words picks, mixed up because I want to get out so much get stuff. And yeah. then, you, then you mess it up. But your intentions are, are right because you've got so much to say. Yeah, that's what I just... Yeah, that's what I speak like. Because I've always been told if you do an interview, don't be blunt and give like one word answers because it just makes... It just doesn't go well. Mm. So I just try to ramble on and then sometimes I just start stuttering and like hesitate and stuff 
Well, when we did our interview, you didn't, I don't think, well, you didn't stutter once. So we just did it in one take. So, you know, you can do it. It's just yeah, obviously like, the confidence to yeah, believe. I feel like I'm it. getting better every time. What is this um, this football Instagram vid that I saw, if not yesterday, the day before, the, the Real Madrid vid? Because I thought it was genuine. And I thought if she <laughs> could probably do that. I, to be honest, it didn't, didn't did stick you, my mind. Did you watch the video? Did you see me? Basically. Yeah. I thought it Basically. was genuine. <laughs> no, basically. Um, I'm involved with like, this media team as well. And like, they're to do with foot, like, girls doing football. But one of my mates, is a, he's a good footballer, and we had a challenge, and he was like, I want you, by the end of the week, to do, like, five key people things. Because most, most female boxers come from a, a football background. Like, they all come from football to boxing. Yeah. But me, that, I can't play football. I hate, I don't like it at all. I can't kick a ball at all. So he gave me this challenge, and then that manager came down and gave me some of my rival stuff. And I was practicing because I need to do it by the end of the week. I can't do one. And then he took, he took like the mick out of me and said about the Real Madrid. And then, but it's not, yeah, I can't, I can't play football. I can't do it. Well, that was the thing. When I saw it, I thought, because I was going to message you and go, oh, congratulations. And then the, 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 the video after that come out, because I thought, yeah, she probably can do that. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's, that won't be, you won't be surprised if she went to Real Madrid and got a scholarship there to play football. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is, no, the complete, I, I can't play. I don't think I'd get a chance at my local football team like around the corner, never mind Real Madrid. <laughs> as well as that then, you're obviously, you do your boxing and let's say you are now partaking in football a little bit. How's your coaching doing? You started doing that? With the, what, the coaching with the boxing? Yeah. Um, It's good. I've never been like, I've always been interested in it, like, I think when I quit boxing or like retire, I think the thing I'll go back to is coaching. I've always found it interesting from seeing from both points of the sport because I think for me, all I ever see is the training, the boxing, like how I deal with going into a fight. So I think it's so interesting to see the other side of like, what's it like for a corner man to have to put the pressure, it's the pressure on them to tell them the right advice or coach someone to be like, be able to go into a fight and win and improve them. So I've always been interested in that. And I think if you can see from both points of being able to box yourself, but being able to see different aspects from a coach, I think it'll help in both. And I enjoy it. I've always done, I've been doing a lot of one-on-ones in the last couple of years with like girls and I've got like regular people now that I do it. And to see them improve, I love it. Mm. So for me, like, I've been doing the Zoom calls as well. So, well, the plan was this year after the Nationals to do my level one for coaching. Yeah, but I don't know when I'll get to see that now. But that's the plan. I want to get as much as my coaching done as well, alongside as my boxing, because it's just something to fall back on as well, and I enjoy it. How much of your dad's coaching influence will it, will be in you? How much of your coaching will be similar to your dad? Yeah, I think I get told a lot I am a strict coach, but I think that's because when I was younger, I think my dad's got a lot softer now with the boxes at the minute. <laughs> when I was when I was younger. My dad was so strict and like, if you want to be the best, you train hard. Like, there's no like slacking. There's none of that. Like, if you mess around, you'll get like punished for it, and you'll go running. Or if you do something wrong, or if you're not listening, it was always give 100. percent And I think I've took that on as well. So mm-hmm. I expect people, if you want to go well, like do well in this sport, you should be giving 100. percent So I think I'm going to be quite strict like my dad. But mm-hmm. I think he's more he's more chilled out. As in, if if I'm fighting. You won't hear him shout at all. Like, mm. if I hear him shout, I know I'm, I should, I'm probably going to be losing that fight. Well, I think I won't be able to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I think I'll be one of them shouting. <laughs> How, um, what then makes a good corner man or woman? Oh, that's an interesting question. Mm. I think knowing your boxer. So it's all right you being like warming up for a fight. If you have two boxers, so we'll say me and Simran. Mm. me I if you have a coach that takes you through a warm-up and tells you what to do I think that's not good I think you should be able to understand your boxer and let your boxer lead it more mm. so say Simran Simran doesn't like a long warm-up she only likes to do a bit of shadow boxing a couple of punches on the pad and then she's ready to fight mm. where me I need to be warming up for a good hour and a half like I need to be dripping in sweat before I go into that fight so I think a coach should understand like 
it's different for every boxer and you've got to adapt to that and just knowing how they work like if they want someone to like like Mickey Driscoll mm. like he he'll he'll give it to me like he'll shout at me he'll get me going for it where other coaches are just calm I think you've got to be able to adapt to what your boxer likes to help to help them more than anything you've moved on to the GB setup what's that like it's it's insane yeah. I, I never expected it when I got on I never expected to get on at that point and it's so different to like England because mm. you're there every week you're a team and you're you're more of an adult on GB where before with England you was an under 18 so they've got to like monitor everything where now you've got a bit more freedom but You've got that many coaches watching you and you've got that much technology over there. It's just, it's insane. What's the average day then in the GB? Uh, in GB, so, so you wake up, you weigh in at se like 7.15. At 7.30, you're on the track running, like different runs, sprints, long runs. Like it changes all the time, like every day. And then about, half, about 11 o'clock, you'll have S&C. And then you'll go back chill. And then from like anywhere from three to like five, you'll have sparring or pads or bags. Who do you spar with? Uh, I, I spar with, there's quite a few I spar with. Caroline, Paige Murney, Shona Whitwell, Karis, mm. Hannah Robinson. There's quite a lot of my way I get to spar, which is good because obviously they're the best girls in the country as well. So to get that every week, it's insane. I've been to the gym myself. What, what's it like to box there? It's do you know, when you first when you first get there, it's, you take like it's overwhelming because it's so big and mm. seeing everyone train there, it's amazing. So to know you get that every week, I don't think you could ask for anything better. And I think some a lot of people you after being there for so long, you do take it for granted a bit and you forget. Mm. But like looking back at it, it's it's the place where everyone wants to be. Like it's got five rings and the technology there and everything's just there in like one facility and it's it's amazing. You've obviously got uh, a few professional boxers that go to train at that gym. Who have you seen or been in contact with? Um, on the there's a few, uh, Anthony Joshua, he trains there a lot when he's in camp in England. Um, Joshua Boatsy, he trains there a lot. Like we, he runs with us. Like he'll still train as if he's on GB, but probably do longer runs. So if we're running, you'll be running, and all of a sudden, Boatsy's going past you, or you're going past Boatsy, and I think that's. It's so crazy, like, seeing, especially them two, Boatsy and AJ there. And then Nicola Adams, she was there when she was still boxing. She was mm. still going down every so often. So you get, like, quite a few, that, that girl. What's Rob McCracken like? Do you know what? You look at him and he seems scary and he seems yeah. strict. He has got that side of him. But he's, he's probably one of the nicest people on GB. Like, he's so nice. Always come over and say hello. Like, just, like, normal like he's a nice man even well, though that's what i was gonna ask conversation what's the team like obviously charlie davis and pete mcgrail and you mentioned karis there what, what's the team like what's the camaraderie like it's it's there's there's never not a funny day at gb mm. no matter what sessions you're in that you're in s and c you'll all be dying from lifting weights or at running and someone will, it's always banter there's always the atmosphere is always good everyone will be always having a laugh and Obviously, when it's serious, you'll train and that. But in the breaks, it's always funny. Like, it is, it is a good laugh at GV. The team's Who's the hardest sick. worker, then, at, 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 with, in your team, anyway? The hardest worker in my team? Other than yourself. You've got about <laughs> Other than yourself. Um, I think so much. Yeah, I think loads of work harder. Charlie, I think she works so hard, especially being a mum. Mm, She's yeah, got that, three yeah. kids at home. And she still manages to, when she's at home, she still manages to be a mum and get all the training in. And I think I look up to her so much for that because it's so hard to have that break and then come back. So I think she trains really hard. Lauren Price, Karis, they all train like Rosie Eccles. She trains insanely hard. I think it's mad out. It's amazing. They all do. Does this enhance your sort of appetite to box as part of the team and go to the Olympics? Yeah, I think training alongside the people that have always, like, you've got Peter McGrail and Pat that have already been to the Olympics. You've got, like, Lauren Price that's won everything you can think of apart from the Olympics. Like, I think training with the best motivates you more to be like them and to see, like, where they are now, to see, like, one day you could be there. I think it motivates you more. And that's all I, like, that's what I want to be. Like, I aim to be like them in four years' time, getting ready for the Olympics. 
obviously the Olympics was um, cancelled because of the coronavirus. What was the reaction to the group? Because obviously the qualifiers were sort of cut short, uh, sort of a quarter of the way through. What was the conversation yeah. between the team? I just remember we was in SNC when we found out. So our SNC coach was on his phone and he got an email and he was just like, the qualifiers have been can- cancelled. Yeah. Like, because obviously the team was already there fighting, get ready to the message. And everyone was just like, everyone just stopped what was doing in SNC and was just all gathered around going, well, what's going to happen now? Like, when's it going to be? And I think the mood just went a bit down a bit because obviously they're our teammates. You see them working hard, even though people are against them to get the spot. Mm. You see them working hard and it's not fair. Like, they had, some of them already qualified. Some was one fight again. So it was really awful to see. But we know, obviously, when, when it's back up, they'll be they'll all be qualifying. <laughs> Like you said, you were meant to box at the National ABAs in Manchester this year. How important is this for you to go and win that title? I think it's very important because obviously it's my first year senior. So to be able to win a title of being a first year senior would be amazing. Like that, it doesn't happen that much. And also, I've won every title I can every year as a like schoolgirl, junior, youth. I've won them all. So. And this would be the main one. Like this would be like the cherry on the cake to get a senior national. Like it's mm. the main one you want. So I think after this, and when I do get to do it, I think I can't wait because obviously I'm seeded number one as well, which is insane. Mm. First year, first year up. So I just want to do everyone proud and hopefully get the title. Well, I last spoke to you. We, we were sort of unsure what you were going to, where you wanted to sort of go in your career. Whether you wanted to go pro or just finish it with the Olympics. Is there any, any update on what you what the end goal is? Yeah, so the goal is always the Olympics. I've always wanted them. I don't know if I want one Olympics, two Olympics but at the time, but I think after that I'll definitely go pro. I want to go to the programme. I want to yeah. see what I can see if I can win anything, hopefully win a few world titles. So I want to do it all. I think if I want to do boxing right then I want both sides of it to experience. For sure. How hard do you reckon it would be for you as a fighter then to transition from the pro amateur game to the pro game? Because your one of your main assets is your fitness. You're relentless when you fight. Yeah, I think for me, my style is more like I think it can be suited to the pro style a lot more. But I think it'll be hard because obviously the amateur styles they're on the toes more the boxing, and I think to get so used to that. But I'm hoping I'll have the experience of so much of fights in the amateur and with GB. And I spar quite a lot of the pro girls as well. So I think that will help me transition in because I'll be used to sparring them and used to the styles and gaining experience from them girls to take into the pros with me. Other than the the GB squad that you box with, what other amateurs do you admire and why? Amateurs? Oh, this is a good question. Well, my, my brother... Yeah. It's the main one, I think. I'm always going to say him. He's top of the list. Like He comes before anyone, I think. Because it was always his dream to do it. And I always remember watching him work so hard. And I, still to this day, I look at him training, I think. I just want to be able to... I don't know how he does it. He trains so hard. And I always look at him and think, if I'm not training that hard, then I'm not going to do anything. So, for me, he's always pushed me as well. Like it, Sometimes, when I was younger, if I didn't want to get up for a run in the morning... He'd be there pushing me on going, Gemma, you need to get up, come on, we're going. And he'd come with me. He missed like holidays in the past for me to to for me like to come help me train and stuff like that. So for me, he's the biggest one, without a doubt. Okay, other than that then, what's um what's your favourite competition to box in? Favourite competition? Oh. Um, I really like the nationals because obviously that's where it all started for me with England. Yeah. So to win them, it's like it's always been a stepping stone to progress to other things. So I think that, and then I've always enjoyed the Europeans as well, I think, because I've done quite a few of them now. The yeah. atmosphere going over there, seeing all the other countries, like boxing, different countries every time, seeing familiar boxing? faces. Um, the Europeans is, I've boxed in Turkey, Bulgaria twice, and Italy. Which yeah. was the best one? Not because of your performance, but which is the best country to box in? Best country. I think Turkey, the setup was amazing. Like, they proper, like, decorated the place out and it was quality. Mm. So that was, like, they, they proper went to town with it in Turkey and it was amazing. 
What's your funniest or most embarrassing boxing moment or memory? <laughs> Either yeah, training think, or competition. I was thinking about this the other day. The funniest moment. Yeah. I'd say uh, when I was in the World Championships, I was boxing like a week in. So like everybody in the team had already boxed. They've already got like that first fight out of the way. And I was like one of the last people. So everyone had the routine, like the coaches knew like where the changing room was, what's happening. So me and, and I was the only one on that day. So it was my first fight in the competition. I was against China. And obviously this Chinese girl, she was massive, like <laughs> six foot three. She was taller than my brother. And yeah. I'm only five foot four. So me, I was like quite nervous. I was like, I've never boxed someone this tall. So we was in the change room. And I, when I box, I've got such a routine, like with my warm up. Mm. And Mickey Driscoll uses a uh, baby oil to like massage into like my legs and my arms to get them warm. But he forgot it. Uh, we ran out of it. So another coach was bringing some down and he forgot it. So me and Mick was like, oh, God, what are we going to do? So this other coach, John, he was like, it's all right. I've got a Ukraine. I've made friends with a Ukraine physio. I'll go get their oil. And he came back and he gave us this pot. And Mickey opened And then he left. So this John left. So it was just me and Mickey in the change room. And Mick opened it and put some on his hand. And it was this, like, black, like, gunky stuff. <laughs> and as soon as it smelled, like literally like it smelled like cow poo like it was the worst yeah. vi like vile thing it's like 20 minutes before i'm going into fight mickey and mickey's and we're like we're like trying not to bow so i'm walking and like, i was walking out to the ring and me and mick was like don't like i can't we couldn't we couldn't even smell like we was trying not to like sniff or anything and it was honestly vile and the warming up for that fight was the funniest thing because none of us could take it serious because i just stunk with this yeah. black stuff all over me so what did you do then? Wash it off before you went in the ring or did, did the opponent have to sort of suffer it? Just suffer it. It helps <laughs> her. Like, if she smells me, she's, gonna, she's not going to want to get near me. And it just, honestly, I stunk. It was the did you win? Most... You must have won. Yeah, I won, but it was just the most... I just couldn't wait. Do you know when you get out of the fight and I was like, I just need a shower. I just need to get to the hotel. I don't even care that I won. I just need to shower this stuff off me. <laughs> Any others? Or is that... Um, any others? I think another funny moment was when me and you know, Stacey Copeland, when we went to Ireland, yeah. we was only going for like sparring camp. And we got there, literally, it was knackered, like it was quite like late at night. And I was like, all oh, right, you're, you're fighting. And we was like, what do you mean we're fighting? We got stuck to this venue and there was fights and I had like an opponent and she had an opponent. And we was there in our like, just normal like training clothes, not like kits or anything. Yeah. And there was like, we, gave, we had to warm up in like the men's toilet. So we was there warming up. And these men was coming in having wheeze and stuff. And it was honestly the most random thing. And we got in and she, I didn't even have her as my corner. And then, oh, it was just the funniest like thing to experience because it was just so random. So what you were doing, like, doing in the toilet? We, we, yeah, she warmed me up for my fight and I warmed her up for her like fight that we had. <laughs> like I was against a, ca a Canadian like 22 year old and I was only 15. Like it just, it, it's Ireland, so anything goes. And we only went for a bit of sparring, so we didn't expect it. And then these men was kept coming in and out, and the, the floor was covered with we, and it was just the most random experience. But with Stacey, she makes everything to laugh, so it was just so funny. It was. What, who are your top three all-time female boxers? Oh, my top three all-time female. Um, Stacey. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, yeah, I love Stacey. Obviously, Katie Taylor and Nicola Adams. And what, what fights both men and female, do you want to see this year? Or next year, as it could be next year? Um, AJ and Fury. Yeah. Who wins yeah. out of that one? Oh, <laughs> I'd hope You're AJ You're mates with AJ, aren't you? Exactly, I want, I want AJ to win. I want but AJ. Want him, or do you think he's going to win? That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to win, but if, I, don't know, I don't know if I think he'll win. There. Do you tell him sure. that? No. <laughs> I just say hi. <laughs> what other fights? Other fights, other fights. Can I let you know a quick secret here? Go on. I don't, I don't watch boxing. Oh, you're not, we, you love doing it, but don't like watching it. I hate it. I hate watching it. Is it because your family is so involved in it and you just want to break from it? Or is it just No, yourself? do you know what? I, just, I don't get what's so fascinating about it. I don't, I don't find it boring. Like, why do you want to watch two people hit each other? <laughs> It's not boring to you. I find it boring. <laughs> but do you know what it is, yeah? Because pro fights are so long as well. Like, 12 round fights, yeah, that, that drags. But then I'm the type of person, I don't want to see two people knock each other out. So yeah. I don't want to see anyone get knocked out. 
But then I'm like, well, if someone knocks him out, then the fight ends earlier. So it's quicker. I don't know, I just don't watch but I want them to fight, though. I want AJ and Fury. I just don't know who else because I don't watch it. <laughs> have you ever been to it, other than your brother's fights or people you know, have you ever been to, like, a professional event, like a Matrim show or a BT or a Frank Warren show? No, I've never been. <laughs> never. So when people say, oh, Gemma, I'm going to watch you fight this weekend, you go, oh, why? That's boring. <laughs> to be fair, though, people ask me to come watch me fight, and I say, no, I, say, nah, I don't, I don't <laughs> think it's good. I don't know, I, just, I hate watching myself fight. Like, do you know, if people ask me, oh, I, don't, I want to come watch you fight, I'm like, I, like me, I prefer fighting away than I prefer fighting in Scunthorpe. Like, me, to me, fighting in Scunthorpe with a big crowd, don't bother me. Like, um, people, like, love it. People are like, yeah, come watch me fight. I'm just like, I'm all right with just my dad and my brother and my mum there. Like, it don't, like, bother me. <laughs> I like, when people talk about your success, do you like talking about yourself boxing or is it just the boxing in general? You don't, you're not actually interested in the sport and stuff? No, I'm just, yeah. I don't even like people, do you know when people try to speak about me? Like, like, that's why I think I'm bad at interviews. I don't like speaking about myself. It's like, I'm not one of these people that go, oh, but I've won this and I've won that. And I don't know. I just, I'm chilled about it all. Like, yeah, I like speaking about boxing, but just, I'm not interested in watching it. Mm. Isn't that weird? That might be quite weird. I don't know. It, it does seem a little weird from someone that's so, so good in the ring and, so, and done so well and so passionate when I've seen her fight. You you always up for it. You just want to get in there, get the job done, yeah. and you're so well professional in it. So then, not having any interest to, other than getting in the ring and doing it, I find it bizarre. Yeah, unless it, I think I like watching. Obviously, if if I know someone personally, like if I know obviously my brother or Simran or anyone GB or any of my teammates in school football, then I like watching it. But for like the pros or people I don't know, like people like watching like random people in like America box, and I'm just like. Nah, not, it's just, I don't know, I don't know why. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> the next five years then, what's the plan? The next, next five years. years. Let's say three years then, because we don't three even know years. what's going to happen next week, let alone in a year's next, time. Let's say three years. Three years. Um, I won the, a national title as a senior, definitely. And then hopefully Commonwealth as well for the Olympics. I'd love to go to the Birmingham <laughs> Commonwealths and hopefully win a gold there. And then just keep moving, like just keep progressing and gaining experience. I think for me, I'm one of the most experienced in England for uh, under 18, like youth, junior. I've always been obviously like the girl that's gone to every tournament, but there's, it's such a big jump from a youth to a senior. Mm. So I don't, I'm not that experienced as a senior at all. So I think the next three years, just going to tournaments that I can or fighting for GB and gaining senior experience for the major tournaments that obviously the Commonwealth's in that. Well, thanks once again for talking to me. You must be absolutely bored, shiftless of talking to me now. We've spent so much time together, but um, you're an absolute star. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm going to keep up to date with everything you're doing all the time. <laughs> Please stay safe. I'm sure we're going to see each other soon. You too.